Welcome to Crosstab Query. You've been on this show before. Yes. You're familiar with the rules then. On this show, we're asking some tough questions. Are you ready? I'm ready. How do you reply to people who claim injustices, atrocities, and even rapes prevail in the world? If, as you say, there had been a creator, then he would have intervened in these crimes. Firstly, we can say this is not evidence of the absence of a creator. It doesn't prove there's no God. Why? Because these matters are the will of the creator. I mean, why doesn't he prevent the persecution? Or why does he prevent the persecution? This is willpower. Therefore, it's not a matter of proving the absence of the creator. We must accept this fact. I compare it to someone not liking a feature on a phone. They might say, no one crafted this. No one created this. Take this example. Someone who looks at the universe and says that there is no creator is using an irrational inference. Then why doesn't Allah come up with a solution? The thing is, he came up with a solution with the Quran and Sunnah. We can see the solution. First, let's accept this. It's about the free will of people. They turn to crime. I mean, the Quran already guides individuals. It gives moral guidance about which acts are right and wrong. For instance, killing the whole of humanity when one person is killed. As another example, when we see someone who's starving, we must follow the rule of zakat. If a person does not follow the rules offered by Allah, they are guilty. Allah has already offered us the rules through the Quran and Sunnah. Therefore, if a sincere person examines this, it's clear that those rule breakers are the culprits. But doesn't the creator you speak of have infinite power and compassion? Then why doesn't he intervene? Instead, he allows it? Are his powers limited or his mercy? The main issue here is not power or compassion. It's also a matter of wisdom. In any case, Allah has compassion because it is Allah who gives us compassion. Allah who gives us maternal compassion. Allah makes us look at these outrages with pity, which includes compassion. So it doesn't make sense to see compassion and reject the source of that compassion. From the moment of our birth, Allah has introduced himself to us with many works of compassion. As an example, when a person gives another person a glass of water, we can see the compassion. However, why can't we see the source of compassion in the one who gives us rivers and rain to quench our thirst? So what can we learn from these crimes and atrocities happening in the world? We learn that Allah has created man and his free will with great wisdom and it is by their evil acts that men misuse this will. It is not evil that evil is created, it is evil that evil is performed. This quote means that free will is not evil. The evil is choosing to use free will to conduct evil acts. Let's look at fire as an example. Fire has many benefits. Just because a person chooses to put his hand in the fire, we can't say the existence of fire is evil. Just like this, free will has many benefits. The existence of will makes a human a human and gives him the ability to distinguish between good and evil. If someone uses free will to sin, to rape someone, that will be their evil, their sin. Otherwise, the existence of will and the existence of man cannot be called evil. There is great wisdom in this. As there are great benefits in Allah's creation of free will in man, just because of the wickedness of a minority, we can't call free will evil. We say that these people are evil. I don't quite understand your answer. Let me give you an example. There are many benefits to making a knife and having a knife. But if a person uses a knife to kill someone, we can't infer that a few people have been killed. So it's evil to make a knife and the one who makes a knife is a terrible person. So just like this example, there is no evil in Allah's creation of things. But we say that there is evil in people abusing these creations. Therefore, it is not evil for Allah to create things, but evil for man to abuse them rapes, severe cruelty to young children. And what about these? As we have just given in the examples, there is no evil in Allah's creation. Each person is responsible for their choices. For example, it is not evil for Allah to create lustful feelings. A lot of good comes from this. There are many benefits such as people getting married, ensuring happiness between them, and building family relationships. But it is the will of a person to abuse this lustful feeling by perpetrating a rape. Committing evil makes it his evil. So what do we learn from this example? It is not evil for Allah to create these feelings. There are many benefits, but choosing to use it for evil makes it that person's responsibility and their evil. Yes, what you said makes sense. So aren't the rape victims faultless? Why be upset about the troubles of characters in the middle of a movie when we know there's a happy ending? We wouldn't. Why? Because we know the end. For example, a person has a nightmare which feels like it lasts for many years. When they wake up from this dream, one cup of water can remove all of the distress. Just a glass of water. In real life too, people can suffer severe problems. But when they have a nice dream, someone can forget their real life troubles. How can Allah, that who can remove our troubles with a simple dream, not ensure that we will forget the troubles of this life with the eternal reward of heaven? For someone who knows the hereafter and knows about heaven, the troubles in this world will seem trivial. 
Well, I understand, but couldn't Allah have prevented these outrages? Couldn't Allah have prevented the rapes? Of course he can prevent it, but we said that Allah's judgment is absolute. Accordingly, he always does the most valuable and logical thing. Otherwise, courts and trials would completely disappear. Because when a person tried to do evil, they would be prevented. Imagine that someone attempts to stab someone, but the knife doesn't go in. Another instance, a bullet that someone shoots deflected away from the victim. If miraculously all crimes are prevented, there will be no such thing as trials. If all crimes are prevented, evil and good spirits will be the same. For example, one is a rapist, the other is a person who does a lot of good. But since the will is disabled, these souls will become equal on the same level. Coal-spirited and diamond-spirited people would not be distinguished. As an example, would you like to be on the same level as a rapist? The justice system separates us from wrongdoers. If it weren't for this test of right and wrong, everyone would then be equal. In this situation, that would be an utterly unwise matter. And because Allah is the absolute judge, he will not intervene. I have one last question. Wouldn't the world be a better place without pain? As you said, there's a place called heaven. But when we imagine this world as heaven, we ask, why are there calamities? Couldn't it be a better place? But the place we have mentioned is Jannah. The world is a training ground for going to Jannah. In the training field, of course, there will be tests. As a result of these tests, we can progress spiritually. If we look at this earth as a place where we can develop ourselves, well, all this makes sense if Jannah exists. Can you prove the existence of Jannah to me? Let's imagine that Sinan the architect is building a new building, say a 10-story building. If someone came and said, he's not going to build the roof of this building and he's just going to leave, no one would believe that. Why? Because everyone knows how wise Sinan the architect is. It doesn't make sense for him to build this building and leave it without a roof. Just like this example, there are endless examples of the wisdom of Allah in the universe, where he has no waste. Therefore, it's nonsense to think that he wouldn't connect this world with the roof of the hereafter. Just like we say about Sinan the architect, such a wise person won't do that. He won't leave this job without making the roof. After seeing all his wisdom, it's impossible for Allah to leave this world without a roof. It's certain that he connects this world to the hereafter. And it's certain that he punishes wrongdoers there and rewards the oppressed. In other words, the continuation of the world will come the hereafter. Deen ki baat phailana sadqay jariya hai. Sawaab ki niyat se video ko share zarur kijiye. Jazakallah.